So let's put the turbidity currents and turbidites uh, together into a process. Okay? So what we have is we have a submarine slope here. Oh, the water level is up here. So this is an ocean, or it could be a lake. Okay. And the turbidites are first triggered by a submarine landslide. I'm just going to use submarine uh, instead of lake. Uh, we'll call it an slope failure. Okay. So this slope failure can be triggered by any number of things, um, like an earthquake, a storm, uh, a flood from a river that brings out lots of sediment and steepens the slope too much, um, uh, tsunamis, all sorts of different things. So what happens in uh, this component here, what, once you have the landslide, you get mixing of uh, sediment and water uh, to form a slurry that's denser than the surrounding water. Okay, and, and that forms the actual uh, turbidity current. Okay. So because it's denser than water, it will, f it will flow down slope. So the third component is that the uh, turbidity current, which is that slurry, flows down the slope. And this is the point where it can actually be erosional and um, help create those canyons. So it often erodes more sediment as it goes down. So it keeps flowing down and at some point it starts slowing down and um, and that's in large part because the slope decreases. Alright, so the friction uh, within the flow among the sediment grains and with the bottom uh, slows the flow down. And when it starts flowing down enough, it starts depositing some sediment. Okay, so it's still flowing down but maybe it's getting slower and less turbulent. And then sort of at this point, you start accumulating sediment. So we have these five steps, uh, more or less, that uh, reflect the, the stages of a turbidity current. And we can also look at what happens on the seafloor. So there, there are two things that are changing. I described the, the changes down slope. But then you also have um, changes through time, which are reflected vertically. By the deposition of the sediment. So the changes through time are what we would see vertically when if we're looking at a sequence of rock. The changes down slope would what be what would happen if we could walk uh, a set of beds laterally all representing the same time. Okay. So if we look at any given spot in time, so let's say uh, we look right here and we can look at the flow speed as a function of time. All right, so from A to B so before the turbidite actually happens, the flow speed is zero. Uh, so this is where A is. And then the, the flow speed is suddenly very, very high. Right. And then the turbidite passes, and the front of the turbidite is moving the, the fastest. And then 
there's water being pulled around behind it as well, so it does it slows down through time. So maybe it has like this peak flow for a little while, and then it slows down through time and goes back to essentially zero. Okay, so at any given spot, the, the flow speed um, slows down through time. So we can look at what we would predict with the flow speed. And I mentioned before that you have erosion. And so this sudden increase in flow speed often causes erosion. Right. And then this time when the flow speed is slowing down through time, you get deposition. And then when you get out, and this would be deposition of the turbidite, right? And then when you go back to a flow speed of zero again, you get the mud. It's just a, the background sediment in the ocean settling out, and you get the, the mud in accumulation. Okay? So at any given point, what, you'll, what you can see is this, this history of the flow speed uh, recorded in, in the actual rock. Thanks for watching.